I'm, I'm gonna keep it real now. There's a million Michael Browns, few thousand in your own hometown, but that's not the biggest threat right now. We're so violent, we got our own selves down. Well, I'm shooting this video now. I actually uh, recorded it about a year and a half ago, um, and I seen that the country was brewing for a lot of social uh, change and, and some of the social issues I was seeing on the ground. And so now, uh, we have a lot of things going on, um, a lot of things we're seeing in the streets, and it's a perfect time uh, to release this video and, uh, and the social conscious music. Um, there's a need for it, and uh, that's why I'm shooting it now. And uh, we're we're tired of just you know just music, just to make music. You have to have a meaning behind it, a purpose behind it, uh, an agenda behind it. And uh, I, this message song is for our young boys, for our young girls watching them die at, at alarming rates and um, something has to be done so it's not just the music but then uh, we actually have to do things on the ground and that's some of the things that I'm actually here on the ground doing things and implementing changes and so you'll see a lot of young people in our videos but those are the same young people that we help on a day-to-day -day basis that we're there to mentor, there to guide, there to uh, whether we're taking shopping, whether we're doing uh, fun things with them, taking them on trips uh, those lives uh, matter to us, so, so now's a good time, and uh, we need more mentors stepping up here in our communities. My father, he used to be a uh, police officer in Philadelphia, uh, and, and he didn't have a bunch of issues uh, in his community because uh, those young folks in the community, they actually knew him. He walked the streets, walked the beat, they knew his name, uh, they knew where he lived at. And what that does is when people know one another and know that you care for one another, it, it takes away a lot of the uh, hostility that one group could have against another. No, I know who you are, and boy, uh, if you don't get out of this street or you don't stop doing this, I'm going to call your mama. I know who your mama is. And that mutual respect and that mutual uh, um, a love that we have for one another, if we can bring that back to the community, uh, we'll have a lot less police shootings. Uh, we'll have a lot less of our young boys and young girls being gunned down if we can all begin to meet and begin to have dialogue and know where each of, our, uh, each of us are coming from. You were once on the honor roll Slept with a thug and got a tie in your soul You didn't know then that your virginity was gold For the price of a condom, it was all sold a Age is just a number, but the streets say you're old You're single now, just a sad story told Yeah, uh, the young girl in our video um, it, It's the plight of many of our young, uh, young girls and throughout the country uh, this plight of uh, getting pregnant uh, uh, at a young age and having to struggle uh, to just be able to survive and make the ends meet. 72% uh, uh, of our African American children are born to single uh, mothers uh, and fathers nowhere uh, to be around. 72%, uh, that's an alarmingly high rate. And so uh, there, this video shows the struggle that a single mother has as far as uh, getting groceries, uh, making sure the child gets to where they need to get to, uh, working and, and struggling with transportation, uh, just struggling to just be able to survive. It's a hard way. And, and a lot of the guys I want to talk to you here now, uh, we, we got to be there. Uh, we got to be there and we got to be present. And in a world that I see, I, I would see that a couple sticking together, working it out for their kids. Um, there are so many studies that show the benefits of uh, children growing up with two parents that are actively engaged and involved in their lives. It, it can literally shape and change uh, their future. So it, it is a big deal, parents, uh, uh, who, we, who we marry, who we, who we spend our time with, who we get pregnant by. Uh, and this is the thing that I believe is plaguing, uh, plaguing our community. There was a time uh, in the past uh, where, where the marriage rate was high, where, where parents would say, you know what, we're going to stick together just for the kids. Uh, they knew the benefits of a mother and a father and, and no matter what people say there are some things that only a father can instill in, into a child whether it's a young man or a young girl there's some things that only a father can do and then there are some things that only a mother can do that a mother's love there's only some things that a mother can instill in a young man and, and can instill in a young woman uh, but 
to just throw either one of them out is it, it, it's, it's not in the best interest of the child. They, they get their 23 chromosomes from their mother and 23 uh, from their uh, father. And in fact, I know we have issues where uh, some of the fathers are, are passed away, some of the mothers are passed away. Then it's imperative that uh, we in the community that we step up and that we become uh, a father to the fatherless. And uh, some of the mothers, you become a mother to the motherless. But it's important that, uh, that we stick together as a unit, as a group, and that we provide what we need to for our kids and our community. Because if not, uh, uh, we'll see that the cycle will repeat itself over and over again and watch things get worse and we wonder what's going on in our community. But that's the, it's an issue of fatherlessness and it's an issue of not having the proper support systems all around our kids to give them the best chance in life. Young boy, young girl, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when the streets come for you? Young boy, young girl, what you gonna do? Yeah, I actually witnessed my first murder. I think it was about three or four. It was in uh, North Philadelphia off uh, West Mount Street. Um, they call it the uh, Badlands up there. I uh, witnessed a man, uh, he was hung out the window. So when you hear that uh, verse in my song, I'm not one of those uh, rappers that uh, makes up stuff. Oh man, hung when I was like four or three. They hung him out the window cause he wasn't worth a tree. The hood isn't fed, the hood is dirty. I witnessed him hanging, literally hanging out of the window. I went in to tell my uh, great aunt, like, listen, there's this guy is dead. He's hanging out the window. They told me to go back outside and play. They didn't believe I was telling the truth, so I, I had to keep knocking on the door. And finally, he said, listen, if you play in here, I'm going to give you a whooping. And, uh, and I, I wasn't playing. I, I watched the guy get murdered and, and get hung out the window. And so they came out. They saw it. They called the police. I watched the police come and cut the noose. Uh, cut him down and uh, literally he had everything still on him from his watch, his money, his chains. It, he did something so bad that, that they, all they wanted was his, his life. And so as a young man, I realized that um, uh, life is fragile. Um, I realized you can be here one moment and go on the next moment. And I realized that uh, to many of us in our community, uh, our lives don't matter to each other. And uh, I've seen that at a very young age that uh, Sometimes uh, to other black people, black lives don't matter, or any other lives don't matter. And, and these are issues and things that um, I've spent my whole life since then. Uh, these are things that we have to address. And uh, we have to shine a light on this in our own community because this is real. Are you the greatest rapper? Well, I just might be. You, you should play my songs like on the nightly. I'm ahead of my time. I'm the rapper Spike Lee. Of course, uh, black lives matter. That's a, that's a no-brainer. Uh, but then you could have every nationality saying, well, white lives matter. So you can have Mexicans. Um, I'm part Spanish. You can have uh, 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 Spanish people, Mexican people saying uh, Mexican lives matter. Uh, you can have uh, Arabs saying Arabs lives matter. To, to, as you get down to the nitty gritty, uh, all lives matter. Uh, but there is a segment of our society that would love to see a race war. Would love to see us uh, played against one another and, uh, and love to see us divided based upon the uh, color of our skin. But I, I'm of the uh, teachings, believe in the teachings of uh, Dr. King. I believe that uh, we shouldn't be judged uh, and judge people just by the color of their skin, but rather by the content of their character. Uh, there are some uh, white people I would trust with my life, and there are some black people I wouldn't. There's some black people I would trust in my life, and there's some white people that I wouldn't. So we can't get based upon and judge people based upon the color of their skin. It's got to be the content of their character. So, but back onto the main issue of Black Lives Matter is, is what can we do? Uh, we can march, we can protest, um, and all that's, all that's fine. But uh, what are we actually doing uh, for the people in our community? What are we doing for the young folks in our community? What are we doing to mentor them, to show them that there is a better way? And so the only lives that really matter to people are the lives you're willing to invest in. The, the other lives really don't matter to you because you're not doing anything to impact those lives. The lives that matter are the lives you're willing to invest in. You're willing to take some time out and spend some time with them. The lives that you're willing to put some money behind and, and help show them a better way. The lives that you're willing to uh, take to the game, uh, uh, take play video games with them, take them to the arcade, uh, take them to the movies, take them walking, uh, give them wisdom and let them learn from some of the mistakes that you may have made. The lives that you're willing to pour into, those are the lives that matter. Uh, other than this, it's, it's political, it's, it's theater. People uh, wanting to show 
a show and wanting to cause discord. And, and, and I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't hate the police. Actually, I love the police. When I, when I need to make a call, I'm calling the police. You say, well, well Pastor, there's some, there's some rogue individuals uh, in the police department. And that's, those are who we need to protest against. Those are who we need to get their badge numbers and make sure that we uh, get them prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But to say that all police officers are wrong because one police officer is wrong, it's, 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 it's crazy. So um, I've seen this and some of the things that we're protesting, uh, some of our black boys being gunned down. See, a, a lot of that is coming from... Um, uh, a lack of male role models and, and uh, an obedience to authority. A lot of that, our young men are, are rebelling against authority. See, we can't uh, try to just win the battle and, and lose the war. Uh, we have to tell our young men, listen, the cop tell you to get out of the street. Get out of the street. If you feel as though there was something wrong, you were targeted, profiled, get his, get his badge number. And then we're going to have community leaders. Uh, we're going to go down. We're going to march down to City Hall to the police station. We're going to make sure that action is taken uh, when action needs to be taken. But we can't support you. You're not listening to the police officer. You're fighting with them, trying to take their gun, not listening to instructions, uh, running. No, you, you can't be doing these things. When you run, you look guilty. Uh, if you fight back, now they got you for resisting arrest. So we got to learn how to uh, fight, but fight in a better way. And then if you're in the wrong, you need to admit that you're in the wrong. Uh, you don't need to run. Uh, if you do something that you shouldn't do, you got to take consequences for your actions. So we, we need this in our community. The older guys giving wisdom to the younger guys, uh, telling them how to stay out of trouble. And if they get caught up in a bad situation where they are profiled, how to address being profiled and, and not doing everything with aggression. Uh, uh, you can't win these type of wars uh, with, uh, with more war. Uh, hate doesn't drive out hate. The only thing stronger than hate is love. Love will drive out hate. And so we have to have more love in our hearts, uh, even in our own communities with one another. Uh, and then we have to love our young boys to, and our young girls to invest in them and spend time with them and show them a better way. And so I, I'm really a proponent of that as the lives that matter to you are the lives you're willing to invest in. Young boy, young girl, what you going to do? What you gonna do when they come for you? When it comes to Colin, Colin Kaepernick, um, I don't agree with his approach. Um, you don't disrespect the flag. You don't disrespect the national anthem. And he says, well, there's some people in the country that I, I don't like it for. And, uh, and I feel like they're oppressing uh, people. Um, number one, um, uh, Colin Kaepernick, uh, the, the next time I, I saw uh, you on TV, you had a uh, Fidel Castro and a Malcolm X uh, shirt on. Fidel Castro is one of the greatest oppressors in, in this, this, this hemisphere uh, over the last uh, 100 years. I mean, he's, he's been absolutely horrible. If you add everybody up in this hemisphere, uh, Fidel Castro would probably rank number one. And so uh, to rock his, his, his clothes while you're talking about oppression uh, of the black people and supporting that is, is absolutely wrong. Uh, number two, uh, sitting down during the national anthem is going to have more people's eyes on you and where they will dig up the socks that you have with police on them as pigs and they will begin to attack you. But it's you sitting down during the national anthem column is, is, is not helping uh, the everyday people. Uh, the racist cop isn't going to say, you know what, man, Colin Kaepernick was sitting down. So you know what, I'm not going to arrest this black boy. That doesn't help. Uh, now, what has happened after that, I, I agree, is that you're putting money uh, behind uh, your sitting down or your kneeling, which you do now. Uh, that's different. Uh, but then the big difference is going to be actually those people that are on the ground that can impact change, that can actually work with these young people and tell them, have the community meetings, the town hall meetings where the police are there and where uh, uh, the young uh, black boys are there and introducing them, having them talk with each other, have a dialogue, uh, a working relationship. Uh, these are the type of things we need. We need things on the ground, not just a, a sitting down during a national anthem, because actually it, it helps no one. You say, well, it'll shine a light on, on the issues that are going on. It, it doesn't shine a light on the issue, it shines a light on that person. And, uh, and that's not good in helping with the issue. So we got to find a way, not just to uh, uh, protest, but to actually protest with the result. When Dr. King and them, they had a boycott, they had a boycott uh, of the buses, but the boycott uh, of the buses impacted the city's money. And so without there being money, uh, then you can have a real change and in, in, in real issues, even with Rosa Parks refusing uh, to where she would sit. That, that could bring real change because 
Now people are boycotting. It impacts other people's money. Now people are willing to sit down and listen to real life issues on the ground rather than just sitting down. It impacts really, it impacts nobody. It just gets a, a bunch of people and veterans like myself gets us upset that you would disrespect the uh, flag and the anthem which we have uh, put our life on the line to defend and to protect uh, those, these freedoms that you do have um, to be able to uh, protest, but that freedom that to sit down that was protected with the lives and the bloods of many of my uh, fellow soldiers and so uh, show some respect I'll put some respect on it